Good afternoon, everyone. Um, P.S. Sibana CEO and uh, our AWS representative, Robin Karibu Sana. Um, we are going to have a press briefing for AWS, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Robin to take the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, P.S. Engineer John Tanui. ICTA CEO, Mr. Stanley Kamanguya, thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to have you for this uh, press briefing, uh, which we don't expect to take uh, too much time, and uh, I will kick this off before uh, inviting the CEO of ICTA, uh, who will then uh, invite the PS to wrap it up. Uh, Amazon Web Services is uh, the world's leader in uh, cloud computing. And uh, this is as recognized by Gartner. And uh, this is because of the breadth and depth that uh, Amazon Web Services brings into the area of cloud computing, which is essentially the online delivery of various uh, computer services, which include everything from data, network, storage, and, and the whole breadth at a uh, building level. But when we go into really the emerging level, we talk about things like machine learning and artificial intelligence. In Kenya, and as Amazon Web Services, we celebrate our continued and growing engagement with uh, the government of Kenya through the Ministry of ICT and the Digital Economy and uh, ICTA. This has enabled previous multiple engagements and also investments in the country, including infrastructure, enablement of uh, skills and also technology projects within the country. We are excited about our collaboration and we continue to see Kenya play a growing role, not just within the country, but also within the region by virtue of its super strategic uh, geographical location. And we expect Kenya to continue, Kenya's role, we expect it, and, and we see as AWS, Kenya's role to continue growing in the area of innovation, in the area of skills, and also becoming, a, continuing to be a regional leader in the area of uh, technology. And so today, we, we are keen to talk about skills, and uh, we, we, we've just come out of a session that was uh, talking about the future of work where skills was actually a big part. And I'm going to just elaborate in three different ways why skills is a big part of the conversation that we are having. When we think today about cloud computing, based on LinkedIn.com, cloud computing is today a top and highly sought after skill across the world. What that then means is in a country, to my second point, in a country where over 70% of our people are below the age of 30, it is critical for us to leverage that demographic dividend and harness it so that then it makes sure that when, we, when, when other parts of the world are actually growing older and we have ourselves in the country with a population that actually is getting yo is, 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 is younger, then we can harness this demographic dividend by skilling them up to get meaningful jobs and also jobs that then bring with by virtue of their global certification. The third area is that when we as, a, as an organization reference uh, various of our customers and, and, and also countries that we've been to, we've noticed that digital transformation and digitization journeys of various organizations, countries, and, and the people that you deal with sometimes do get hampered or greatly challenged by a lack of skills. In fact, for a lot of digitization journeys, we've realized that a, a, a skill challenge is one of the top three areas of, of challenge. And therefore today, as AWS, to support the country's digital transformation journey or digitization journey, and in alignment with the digital master plan that was launched just a year ago here at Connected, we are happy to announce a collaboration between Amazon Web Services and the ICT Authority to train 10,000 students across 10 public universities on AWS Academy annually from later this year in June 2023. We are also happy to announce that in addition to that, and in order to connect these students who will then continually be uh, trained and certified, AWS is working with organizations like 
gebear.com, which is an online platform that then connects these uh, technically certified and trained students to job opportunities across various parts of the world, which then refers to the point we made earlier around being able to then harness our, our, our demographic dividend as a country. And therefore, we really want to thank the government of Kenya, the MOICT and uh, the Ministry of ICT and the Digital Economy uh, to, through PS, ICT authority led by uh, Mr. Stanley Kamanguya, and also our partner, our authorized training partner, Computer Learning Center, who we are working with in the initial phase of this. So as we kick off, the initial phase will involve enabling of trainers within these 10 public universities, and that is already ongoing. And this is then to ensure that come June, our 10, the 10 uni public universities that have been identified through ICT authority are then able to roll out this initiative. As Amazon Web Services, we remain committed to a growing collaboration with uh, the government of Kenya, and we look forward to even other initiatives that will continue to, that will then come thereafter. And with this, I think I want to thank you for the opportunity, and I'll then uh, invite the ICT Authority CEO, Mr. Stanley Kamanguya. Karibu. Um, thank you very much, uh, Robin. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are glad to uh, join in this uh, collaboration with the AWS as part of our Connected Summit uh, this year, whose theme is uh, digital economy and less opportunities to shape our future. And I think as we have been discussing in various uh, uh, forums, uh, the issue of skills has come out very strongly at both levels of government. Because we really need to build a digitally enabled workforce if we are going to achieve um, and realize the dream of a digital economy. But also we want to look at uh, skills from uh, two facets. First is the, uh, the public sector workforce and uh, the citizen uh, facing uh, skills that we need to enable the citizens to be able to consume the services that we are putting online and utilize the infrastructure uh, for economic gain. When we look at the public workforce, we shall be embarking on um, training both the technical ICT uh, officers for them to be able to deploy, implement, manage, and maintain the systems and the infrastructure that we are putting in place, but also the general public workforce for them to be able to use this infrastructure and systems to offer services to citizens. But as we do that, we need to reflect and go back a bit uh, to the value chain of getting people into the workforce. And this is where there is collaboration and the work that we need to do around our tertiary education and universities uh, come in so that the students who are uh, going through these institutions, regardless of the courses that they are taking, they are exposed to how to work within those professions, but um, doing so uh, with the right digital skills. We think that also our universities can help us to then also avail um, training materials, development of the training materials and delivery of the courses for the other two facets of, uh, of, of, of um, training that I spoke about both for the, for the, for the citizen-facing side and also for the public workforce. So we see this uh, collaboration as really good synergy for us uh, to be able to bridge the gap that we have in the digital uh, skills and also to accelerate 
um, our achievement of the digital economy. Allow me now with those uh, few remarks just to ask uh, the Principal Secretary, Engineer Jan Tanui, to make his remarks. Welcome, PS. Thank you, Stanley, and thank you, Robin. Um, this is a very exciting moment to see our global tech partners uh, bringing important conversations, addressing some of our issues. Government has prioritized uh, the sector, that's the ICT and the digital economy sector. We have very key projects that we're implementing. One of the key projects is enhancing connectivity across our country. We want to ensure we connect broadband, fiber connectivity to every ward in our country. We've already made great progress. Most all of all our county headquarters are connected with fiber. Majority of the sub county headquarters are already connected. And now we are aiming to connect every ward. Through that, we will ensure we are able to connect uh, our schools, about 40,000 institutions, about 13,000 hospitals, and this connectivity is to open possibilities for our people across the world. So as we build that, we're looking also how to digitalize our government processes and ensure services are provided online and we build a paperless government. Through that, we'll be generating quite a lot of data this data needs to be stored somewhere, and this is attracting also global players who are interested to put cloud infrastructure in the country. Data is the future, or the, 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 the oil uh, is one of the most valuable resources. In the past, we looked at oil as the key resource for economies, but for the future, it's going to be actually data. And so today, as we have this conversation and the agreement between ICT Authority and Amazon Web Services, we are very excited because it's addressing, addressing one of the important things we are looking at. We want to ensure the infrastructure we're building across the country opens opportunities for our people so that they can access job opportunities from across the world. As mentioned by Robin about adverts that we see in uh, platforms like um, LinkedIn. We see various kind of job opportunities from across the world. We have a very strong talent in our country, and we think we need to prepare our talent to access those opportunities. One of the important uh, jobs is cloud uh, infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, and jobs in the cloud space. Amazon Web Services are partnering with ICT Authority to pro provide learning and digital skills to enable our people to access jobs within the cloud infrastructure. This is quite an exciting opportunity. It's advancing some of the programs we've had as a country. We've had Achira. We recently established Chitume. And now we are having Amazon Web Services and ICT Authority having another agreement to now provide training for specialized courses that will enable our youth access quality jobs and earn more. And working from anywhere across our country through the infrastructure that we are building. So it's a very exciting moment for us because we need to open these opportunities for our people because the next quality jobs is actually data related. And so working with Amazon, who is a leader in that space, is something we appreciate. We want to thank Amazon Web Services for this initiative and continue to encourage them to consider investing more in this country. We're looking forward to seeing them setting a pace in this country. We're looking at seeing them establishing their facilities in Kenya, opening more quality jobs for our country, and also looking at how they can take advantage of the strengths of our country, one being talent, they, we have very strong talent uh, pool in our country. Secondly, we have huge uh, capacity in our renewable energies, which can power uh, digital infrastructures, things that Amazon Web Services relies on. So we're looking forward in this relationship going forward. As we start, we focus on training opportunities. We want to encourage our youth 
to look at that opportunity that's been opened. It's not just training. He has mentioned also the clarity and clearly that there are partners who will also be able to link you to job opportunities. So take advantage of this training, 10,000 uh, in 10 universities. That's a big uh, step towards addressing the digital cap that we have and enabling our people access quality global jobs from here at home. So thank you, Robin, for the good job you are doing. And ICTA, we encourage you to enhance this and hopefully this will continue every year and we can uh, ensure also that our young people in those universities can get this information timely and benefit from these programs. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you so much, Bona PS. Thank you so much, uh, Bona CEO. Thank you so much, Mr. Robin. And now, with no further ado, I'm just going to call any member of the press who has any question. Um, you can just stand up. Do we have anyone? Yes, O'Brien. You can start by introducing yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for the specific question. In terms of uh, rollout, so I think as we had mentioned earlier, so two things are happening. There's going to be two phases. The program itself is an annual program. So the 10,000 students that we're referring to is, is an annual program. So every year there will be 10,000 students across 10 universities. The initial phase involves uh, training of at least two trainers per university that are then going to ensure that this is a sustainable. The Prime Cabinet Secretary yesterday, one of the three keywords that he mentioned was uh, there was growth, sustainability, and equity. The, the middle word sustainability was to ensure that we do not initiate uh, programs or initiatives that then are just one off. So the plan is to have it annually across 10 universities in the first phase. And as, as part of the way that we do innovation, uh, we will then pick our learnings within the year and see how do we then roll this out in a much more accelerated way. In terms of uh, not just digital services tax, there was quite a number of pronouncements done by the president. We are super excited about the president's announcements and we continued looking forward to working with his government in terms of the rollout of the pronouncements and as we also identify opportunities for us and other organizations within the same industry. Thank you. So again, thank you for the question. So when we look at, remember these were announcements and pronouncements. So we are now actively engaging with the government to get a better understanding of how this will be rolled out. Once we then have that understanding, it then puts us in a much better position to then see what does then, how does that then impact the industry and subsequently the economy. What we're very excited about to reiterate the earlier point is the opportunity that this provides based on concerns that have been raised earlier. So at this point, it's, we are still in engagement. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Humphrey? Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Humphrey. So uh, to pick up from what the PS actually mentioned in his speech yesterday, one of the keywords that kept coming out was partnership, collaboration, and inclusivity across the industry. So uh, you remember at the beginning of the, this session, we talked about cloud computing is now already by virtue of uh, the survey done by LinkedIn.com is now a highly sought after and top skill across the world. What that means then is that the, the part we see this initiative playing is to then fast track and accelerate skills in cloud computing across our public universities so that then as our tech slash engineering students graduate, then they are already graduating with the skills in this area and then are able to work in reference to the PS's words earlier, even in global organizations ready and with a global certification. That is, the, that is the area that we see. There's already players in other areas, and therefore what we're coming, we're coming to bring the strength of Amazon Web Services in cloud computing so that then we can accelerate the role that Kenya is going to play at a global level. Thank you, Humphrey. Let me just add, um, you know, on the, on, the, on the scope, because when you look at, um, the graduates that we are churning out. The universities believe that a majority of them and uh, those uh, who've been conducting surveys can confirm the numbers. About 70% of, of the universities believe that the students that they're generating and giving to the job markets are actually ready for the job market. But the people in the job market, the industry, actually less than half uh, percent, less than 50 percent, less than half of them think that um, the graduates are ready for the job market. And more specifically for our sector, one of the reasons being uh, the level at which technology is, is evolving. So well, we know that uh, even those in the job, job market will continue to require uh, to keep on training. What we want to do uh, through these collaborations and other collaborations in the sector is to try and close these differences so that we try as much as possible to match the expectations of the employers and the job market and what is coming out of the, of the education. So it has to be an evolving program uh, that addresses emerging technologies on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. So uh, Amazon Web Services is uh, playing two roles. Uh, through AWS Academy, we are providing the curriculum, which is regularly updated, maintained by Amazon Web Services. Secondly, we are also going to be skilling the trainers. We are then part of our collaboration with the ICT Authority was to then have ICT Authority. There's already been engagement on the universities, and the list is being finalized on the number of universities. What we can confirm is that it does cover the breadth of the country. And that will then be co communicated by the ICT authority.
So let me go first in the, in the order that it was asked. So uh, I'm going to reference Gartner. Uh, Gartner rates uh, Amazon Web Services as a leader in the area of cloud computing. And therefore, while if, if, you, if, you, if you check out the scope and curriculum of the, of the program, cloud computing at, at, its, at its most basic level will be, will be covered. But we will also be bringing the experience of over 16 years in cloud computing as a company that not only has was born in the cloud in the year 2006, but has continuously innovated, grown, made our mistakes on the cloud. That definitely then brings the richness into the AWS Academy program. And therefore, when we talk about then continuously, you notice I, was, I, I made very clear that we AWS will be offering and maintaining, meaning there is continuous update of this curriculum to ensure that every student that gets access to this then is talking about the latest uh, kind of education and curriculum across the world. That then raises definitely the level and also quality of the skills we roll out from the Kenyan universities. Thank you. First, I want to uh, indicate that the government really prioritizes the issue of creating jobs. Um, if you check in terms of prioritization of our programs as a government, one of the objectives is that each program should be actually contributing to creation of jobs. Digital space has the potential to provide huge number of jobs to our youth, and that's why we are prioritizing digital skills. Last year during the Chamuri Day, uh, the president launched a program which uh, with partners, uh, we had one partner who provided uh, training opportunities, that's the, the Arizona State University, and many young people in our universities and young graduates took over those opportunities to equip themselves with the digital skills because we think the future is digital. The future is jobs within the digital space, online jobs, remote work, IT-enabled services, and many such uh, opportunities. We are also digitalizing in government, and we are creating huge data that required to be stored. We are going to build infrastructure as government that will store public sector data, but we are also working with private sector. They already uh, a huge uh, space provided currently by private sector and government is using those platforms. We are committed to work with the private sector to ensure that based on the data um, rating, we are able to decide which data to give within public sector infrastructure and which ones to use the cloud infrastructure that are built by our partners. And we think there is huge room. We are digitizing over five billion records. We are taking entire government to a digital space. We are starting a journey towards a paperless government. The requirement on digital infrastructure is huge. And so this opportunity uh, by Amazon Web Services to provide training on cloud computing and other related cloud career trainings is highly welcome. And we encourage our youth to take this opportunity very seriously because this is now a um, highly focused area, specialized area, and it will offer more opportunities and career success to our young people. So we encourage them to take this opportunity seriously and government will continue to work with other partners. Today we are working with Amazon Web Services, we'll be working with the other partners, and it's not only looking at the opportunities of jobs here in the country. We're going to work with Amazon Web Services to see that these people, our young people have taken this training, 10,000 every year, can be able to access global opportunities. It's highly welcome, and we really thank Amazon Web Services 
by not just showing interest in establishing more presence here in the country, but by offering these training opportunities for our young people so that they can access global opportunities. So I think it's a very exciting news, uh, even for the 10 universities who will be selected. We encourage them to take it uh, seriously. We will see if within those 10 universities also Tibet institutions can be part of it. And especially as we grow it from one year to the other, uh, we will be factoring in lessons learned from the previous years. Thank you. So um, thank you for the question on um, the gap in terms of the digital skills. And uh, we don't have a complete record for the entire country. And I'll tell you why. It's because different sectors have been conducting different skills assessments at different times. And even within government, uh, the last uh, skills assessment for ICT that was conducted uh, is probably eight, ten years uh, ago. So what we then need to do is to collaborate with uh, KEPSA together with uh, our ministry so that we can then be able to map out a comprehensive um, analysis of uh, the ICT skills in the country. We know that there are some sectors which are very well equipped in terms of ICT, like banking and the telcos and so on. But then we have some other critical sectors uh, which we really need to support, uh, you know, including the areas of agriculture and other traditional uh, sectors that have been run, you know, without incorporation of, of, of the ICT, ICT staff. So uh, we will be working with the, with the ministry, the Public Service Commission, and also uh, the, uh, the private sector association, KEPSA, to see how and what is the most efficient way of mapping out uh, our digital skills gap because we think also we need to at least uh, be clear on where we are starting from. Thank you very much.